Welcome to the Business Forum, the program that focuses on business, finance, entrepreneurship, banking, and all other related matters. I am your host, Michael Archibald. Now, we have the pleasure tonight of speaking to a very interesting lady who is involved in a very important segment of the economy, the real estate market. And we also want to talk with her about the challenges faced by female uh, managers, entrepreneurs in this, what is still called male dominated world. And that lady is Miss Paula Latouche. So much, Michael. It's a pleasure to be on your show tonight today. I am really looking forward to our discussion and to share some insights on the market. And hopefully there are some good takeaways from this conversation. Well, I'm looking so, forward to that. Looking forward to yes. it. Let's start with uh -huh. talking about the, the, the real estate market. When you mm -hmm. look back, um, the, 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 the COVID hurt the economy in, in myriad of ways. Mm -hmm. Was your sector hurt as badly or were you able to ride through things fairly comfortably? Well, I wouldn't say fairly comfortably, but we were able to ride through it. Um, the market remained stable. We did see some losses, which, as I say, I'm a numbers girl, so I would explain to you in a little bit of more details of um, the difference sure. between the years, right? So what we saw that in 2020, we saw that our sales were, we didn't lose any business in 2020 because we had sales in the pipeline from 2019. From 2019, yes, okay. Yes, so then, so you actually, but 20, just to put on file here, on record, sorry, 2019 was one of the biggest years we've had in sales since 2015, right? Um, in 2020, we saw a drop um, because of the pandemic, of course. And then in 2021, we saw a further drop. So um, what we've noticed, the average land um, transaction in value was about $104,333, right? And in homes, you see the value average between three to six hundred thousand. What currency is this? And we're talking EC because okay. we're in an EC Good. country. Yes. Right. Good. So we're seeing that um, that remains stable. We saw in 2021 um, a vast reduction in sales due to buyers, which most of them are Grenadian diaspora, not being able to travel to Grenada. Right. And the, these are the biggest buyers we have, which I'll explain to you in percentage just now how big the diaspora market supports the Grenada real estate market. Um, what we've seen is that St. George's continues to be the place where most real estate transactions are taking place in terms of value. Right. And so 54.1% um, increase in 2020. Two. Increase. Increase, right. yes. Right? Um, we've seen that St. Saint, Saint Andrews as well as St. David's and Caracu all have remained in terms of increasing transaction in these areas. And what I would say about that is in St. George's, you were starting to see that there is a contraction in purchasing um, affordable property because everyone want to purchase in St. George's. <laughs> so we have to look at ways of you now moving up to St. David's and that's the next biggest place. Um, well, a, a question, a question. Mm -hmm. so, sorry to interrupt. But you said there was a contraction in the St. George's area. Mm -hmm. and, and the reason, you, why you thought that there was a contraction? Because you're finding limited inventory at the ah, moment. Ah, uh, yes. okay, okay, so okay. If, for instance, you're looking now for a piece of land in St. George's for 80,000 EC dollars, it's hard to find one yes, that is yes. easy access, um, you know, close to bus route and all of that because in the last three to four years, we see a lot of people purchase property Understood. in St. George's Understood. around that price point. Yeah. So now you're, you're heading to St. David's. Yes. Mm -hmm. So is there real interest in St. David's? Are you seeing yes, real interest? David. Yes, and I would, I would say St. David's is the next place. St. David's is the next place people should 
uh, invest. I've been telling my customers that um, St. David's, you know, it seems like it's carded for the next town. It's carded for the next big place to develop the hotels and have more commercial activities. So I think um, that's the place you would want to move to because then there, it's getting more and more amenities. And that means you don't have to come to St. George's to to Understood. get, you know, your yes. groceries and all of yeah. that. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about Karakou? Well, Karakou is another place we've seen a lot of interest. And funny you ask that question because a lot of Grenadians living here during the pandemic, they had the opportunity to rediscover Karakou. And some of them <laughs> discover Karakou. <laughs> I'm one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't so, buy, but it certainly sparked my interest after yeah, a visit to Karakou, especially with the work right. that has been done with the roads, etc. Correct. And we've seen now there is a peak um, of interest in Karakou, and everyone now wanted to purchase a small lot there, a little home, you know. <clears> so <throat> that that is the next place as well that seems to have some opportunities in terms of real estate. Um, the next area, as usual, is St. Andrews who is always, because of the town, um, Grenville town, um, you see some activities around that area as well as, you know, Grenville is one of, you know, it's, well, I said Andrew is one of the biggest parishes. So you understand what's um, in terms of population size. You hear, you hear two concerns expressed by Grenadians fairly regularly. One, mm -hmm. they think the prices are going out of reach and that they can't invest in land. Mm -hmm. And secondly, mm -hmm. you hear the concern that all the land that is being sold is being sold to foreigners and just now we won't have any land for ourselves what's your reaction to that i am i would say i'm very proud and happy to say as i sit here today based on my numbers that 88 percent of grenadians are purchasing grenadian real estate it's eight percent of the purchases so far has been grenadians yes grenadians 88 percent are grenadians and 12% are non-nationals, right? Non-Grenadians, foreigners, however you want to call them. But 88%. And most of the sales are, are by uh, being done by the, the diaspora, whether in the, in the UK, whether they are in the US, they're purchasing home. The diaspora believes in the Grenada market. So I am very proud to say today that that's so we're, so that talk about Grenadians, you know, the prices are getting too high and Grenadians can't purchase. The numbers does not say that. Well, you know, this information that it is Grenadians that are buying up Grenada must be put out there, Paula, because the view of so many people at all levels of society is that Grenadians are, are being dealt out and not, not won't be able to get any land. It is very informative. And I, and I, and I charge you, if that is if the right term, to get that information out there, you know? Yes, and it's listen, it's been consistent <clears throat> for the last seven years. It, I mean, since I've been doing this report, it's been consistent, consistent, between 70% uh, uh, to 89%. It's just been consistent. So um, it hasn't changed. And I think uh, we've seen that last year, um, you know, it's had a big growth in terms of uh, Grenadians purchasing again. So it just continues to grow. Where are the largest percentage or group of Grenadians coming from? Is it the UK or is it the, the North America? North America. North America. Uh, that that is also a surprise. I thought it would have been the UK. You know why it's not the UK? The dollar. Yeah. The pound to the US dollar. Yes, 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 that's reduced. Yes, yes. Because yes. You remember, there were so many Grenadians who went up to the United Kingdom in the in the 40s or 50s. I don't remember exactly when it was. And so many mm -hmm. of them now are in their 70s, 80s, retiring, etc. And they seem to be coming home, or they worked a few years ago coming home. So I thought it, it would have been from that, 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 that market. You mentioned. I, I, sorry, mm -hmm. go ahead. No, Sorry, I was going to tell you, most of the ones that are coming home now are younger than the ones who were coming home ah. eight years ago. They're not waiting till they reach 60 and 70 to come back. And then the medical care situation, they have to return to the yes. UK and then they leave the house there. Yeah. So most of them are now coming back between four, early 40s into their 50s, knowing they want to be able to enjoy Grenada. 
That is interesting because they also have something to offer to Grenada when they return when they return home. That is very very interesting. You mentioned some average prices, and I thought it was important to repeat them. Mm -hmm. um, the average mm -hmm. prices for land, and then the average mm -hmm. prices for a home or a property. Right. So the average price for land is about one hundred and four thousand EC, which and, you would. And that see is for how much land? So you're talking about roughly, <laughs> roughly. I'm not trying to pin you here. Just it's kind a 10, of. Square feet. All right. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. Yes, and a home, and again, if you a home for three hundred thousand or so would most likely be in the St Andrews or a St Patrick's area, mm -hmm. um, as you come to Brenville, St Andrews, come to St George's. You know, you'll see that that price change. And go up significantly. So, um, the average Grenadian living here would purchase between three to five, sometimes six hundred thousand. And then the diaspora coming back, they would purchase uh, from about two fifty US, go up to the sky's the limit. All right, let's come right forward now to this year, <clears throat> first five months of this year. How is that looking? Mm -hmm. How has that been? Well, as the COVID restrictions um, have been withdrawn by the government, we're seeing a lot of the diaspora returning to Grenada because they weren't able to travel yes. in the last few years. So now they're returning and we're starting to see an uptick in activities, um, interest. Some of them would have shown interest since in 2020 and now they have the opportunity to travel without the COVID restrictions. And they're just happy to be here and now looking for opportunities to purchase home for retirement, vacation as an investment. And um, the, some of them are saying, you know, um, based on what they're seeing, there might be some sort of recession coming. So they want to have the opportunity to purchase now. Okay, okay, okay. All right, Paul, I'm going to segue a little bit now from the real estate market to talk about Paula, the manager, the leader. Um, <laughs> what are some of the challenges you have faced? We still hear that the glass ceiling is in place and women cannot go past the glass ceiling. We hear it's still a male-dominated world, which I don't agree with at all. But what are some of the challenges? You are a model to right. other young women who are looking up, who want to get into business but are scared. First, yeah. what are some of the challenges you have faced? Well, first of all, I would say um, to any woman who, woman or woman or out there who want to start a business, you first have to believe in yourself. Believe, believe, believe that it's possible because without believing in you, nobody else would believe in yeah. you, right? So that's where you have to start from. And then get help, right? Find a mentor. Um, find a, 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 a support network who can guide you and support you during your journey. That's important. Um, but um, the challenges that I've faced is define social expectations. I think women have to work harder um, to be taken seriously and to show that they, you know, they are forced to reckon with. Um, accessing, accessing funding for your business and people trusting and believing that you can um, you can make it. Um, so funding, I know you had um, Richard earlier on the program, and um, I think that is something they can work on in terms of helping women um, or, you know, the general public in assessing funding for a business. Um, building a support network balancing business and family life. You know, that is difficult because as a woman, you're still a mother. <laughs> you know, if you have kids, you're still a wife, if you're yeah. married, and you still expect to, you know, <laughs> perform this, your duty. The, the superwoman. <laughs> <laughs> you have so, to be a superwoman, right? Yes, and do all everything at the same level and standard, like you're, you, you're <clears> not, you know, not doing multiple things at all right so that is you know that's and then coping with fear or failure because the stress yep. of having yeah. to you know like oh my god i can't fail like you know um because you know with expectations again yeah. and for you trying to prove a point because being a woman you know you have to say okay well if i fail they won't say because of 
this situation, it is more. Yeah. <laughs> they say it's failed <laughs> because you're a woman. <laughs> yes. Say it, say it. <laughs> what it is about Paula, what is the character traits within you that gave you the strength to persevere against all those challenges and, and, and certainly from, from all appearances succeed? Yeah, I mean, for me, I, I believe in me and I trust in me. I, I, I really do. Um, I, I believe in, in, in I mean, I, I know I have a very, um, I think critically and I have a good support network. Um, I also have a good uh, partner uh, in marriage and in business and that helps. Um, but for me, in terms of my character traits, I would say I'm resilient. Mm -hmm. I am very strong, <laughs> right? Um, I, I love people and I, I'm passionate about what I do. And I believe in standards. I believe in systems. Yes. I, I, I believe that uh, in technology, in advancing yourself, I believe in change. I think a lot of people don't like change and you have to be open to change, yes. right? People are afraid um, of change. You, you, the people generally are afraid of change. Change scares people. And you have to make your yeah. mind up that the only thing um, stable in this world that they expect is change. Change is going to happen every day. But still, sure. we are, I, I agree, I'm agreeing with you. We are afraid of change. Please go ahead. Yeah. Yes. And I, um, I don't give up. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and this is one of the things about me. I don't give up. I keep at it. Um, even when I have failures, I try my best and get up and move on, find a solution. I don't dwell on the past, yeah? Because if you dwell on the past, you can't move forward. Yeah. So you have to constantly find ways to continue to motivate yourself. I'm very self-motivating. I'm, I'm a learner as well. And that's a, a lot of, th a, a, a character, a lot of people um, they think, okay, I, I know it all. I am open to learning. I'm open to learning, even though it's not to do with my industry, but um, the industry that I would say um, support my industry. So banking, surveying, all the things, you know, that makes the real estate market what it is, I have to know about it. Um, I should be... Um, I should know what are the ins and outs of these industries so I could guide my clients. So for me, it's, 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 it's always having that will and that desire to learn. Let, so me, ask you, let me ask you to give budding entrepreneurs, budding female entrepreneurs, three, two or three important bits of advice. What would they be? What would you say if you had a class of young women who I'm saying, Paula Latouche, we look at you, we look up to you, we see you making progress, you're a businesswoman. What bits of advice would you give to them? Two or three bits of advice. The first one, as I said before, which is key, is believe in, believing and yes. trusting in yourself. Yes. That is the first. Without that, <clears throat> you can't go anywhere. Secondly, know your product, know your industry. Whatever business you're going into, make sure that you know what you're getting into and remember that everything takes time rome was not built, built in a day. Yeah. <laughs> right you're going to have challenges this is you're going to have good days and bad days right but not giving up is the key All right. yeah find Find help when you need help. And ask Find help you. when you need help. Reach out for help when you do. We don't do that often enough. We, we keep everything to ourselves. Correct. Yeah. And there are people out there, I can tell you, um, Michael, that would help you. Yeah. Um, I have helped um, uh, other women in business. I've helped other, you know, men. <clears throat> name it. You ask me a question, Paula, how did you do this? Or I'm struggling with this, I'm having a challenge. And I'm happy to answer because I'm not an island. And if someone else didn't help me, how 
I wouldn't be here sitting today yes, talking to yeah, you. Yeah, so I nice. think one of the things that we need to do more in as, as business people and to mentor young people is to show them that they have our support. They can come to us, that we're not... Um, we're, we're not an island. We have to help people. We have to give back and motivate the young people and, and let them know that, you know, there is a future. So would you encourage women to get into business? Oh, yes, I will. But I can tell you this, huh? I, I must say, business is not for the faint heart, as you know. <laughs> yes, yes, I know, I know, I know, I know. Right? So you have to have gut and grit. And if you don't have gut and grit, these two things, <laughs> okay. you know, you'll make it. We, 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 we have the one last question for you. The, the, the time just disappeared, as I said. I know. This is crazy. We talked about the first half of 2022. What are your expectations for the rest of the year? Both for the, your sector in particular, but the economy also, but your sector in particular. What are your expectations? I mean, for me... Um, I'm noticing that, you know, because most of our buyers, Grenadian buyers, are coming from North America, as you can see, the housing <clears> market there is, is becoming unaffordable. So I am projecting that we'll continue to see um, increase in activity and interest in Grenada in purchasing here. At what level, I can't say, because there are some variables now that are in play. We have the war, as you know. Yes. We have that is about you know the the gas prices and food prices we have shipping issues so there are a lot of still a lot of uncertainties the pandemic is not over yeah. um, we're learning to live with it so there are a lot of uncertainties still out there that we have to keep an eye on so I like to think positive you have to be a positive thinker right and manifest what you want so I'm not going to put any bad vibes out there because I don't want any bad vibrations. Um, but I also have to be realistic as well in my thinking. So for me, I'm seeing that it, it seems like it's going to continue. But knowing that we have all of these variables in play, that could change things at any time. Paula, thank you very, very much. I think I'm a lucky man being able to interview an interesting interviewee such as yourself. Thank you very, very much. And I hope well, you'll be hope consent to come back with us sometime. Yes, and I do hope I'll share these numbers with you yes. as well as I'm about to do the real estate report, which I'll put out next month. And I, it will be in video form and I'll be speaking to everyone. And please them talk the because we are not readers. So please talk. I, that information that it is Grenadians that are buying Grenada, I think is critical. Yes, I will uh, make sure. And thank you. And thank you for listening. And it's, it was my pleasure. Thank you very much. And we'll see you again. Care. Bye. This was the Business Forum, and we will be back shortly.